They chose a different route. They didn't call my attorney. Instead, they went with this shock and awe, terrorist strategy. To, yeah, 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 let me go to the airport and then, then take me with five agents like I'm an Al-Qaeda terrorist, rock me into a car, and the next thing I know, look, man, I'm in leg irons, handcuffs, strip search. I mean, it was not without comedy. I mean, at one point, the FBI agents couldn't find the door to go into where I was supposed to go. The fingerprint machine didn't work. But, but it, you know, people do not want to sit in solitary confinement in leg irons, denied food, denied water, denied an attorney. And yet, it, it, this is what we live in. Former White House trade advisor Peter Navarro speaking out on becoming the first Trump aide to be indicted in the criminal investigation in the events on January 6th and arrested, obviously. Circumstances of that raise questions about the abuse of power by the left, as in they're abusing power, and the vindictive nature of their efforts to keep Trump out of the White House and, of course, to punish members of his administration after the fact. Join me now to dive into this with us, fellow at the Claremont Institute, Ben Weingarten. Ben, how are you, buddy? I'm well, Buck. How about you? I mean, not great when I see that the Stasi are alive and well, courtesy of the Democrat-run FBI here. What the heck is going on? Yeah, this Peter Navarro case, I think, is a remarkable illustration of what is a two-tier, which is to say, injustice system that we are currently suffering under as a country. And the split screen, as I argue in a recent piece of The Federalist, is remarkable between Hillary Clinton's campaign lawyer, Michael Sussman, who gets off for clearly lying to the FBI with multiple smoking guns, but he's a protected member of the regime and he's protected by a jury truly of his peers and a, and a, and a like-minded judge in Washington, D.C. for lying to the FBI. And here you have Peter Navarro, who refuses to essentially submit to a wholly illegitimate sham <laughs> Soviet Soviet show trial style committee, and he gets shackled at the airport. He isn't even given the courtesy of you know, being given a call, asked you know if he wants to see his lawyer, turn himself in. Not that he should be in this situation in the first place, but he is clearly viewed as an enemy of the regime, and consequently the regime comes down on him with its full force, really in unprecedented fashion here in terms of this criminal contempt referral but Michael Sussman walks free with his head held high. It's a perfect illustration of a two-tier justice system. And it's, it's been on stark display for all to see over the last five plus years. But this is maybe the most egregious example of it. On that two-tier justice system, you wrote in The Federalist that Michael Sussman walking free from DC federal court and a harried and bewildered former Donald Trump advisor Peter Navarro being hauled before it following his account of a harrowing arrest and detainment ought to be ingrained indelibly in the American mind. And in some ways, in some respects, I think that's kind of the point of the exercise. They want to have something like a perp walk of a Peter Navarro, treat him as if he's some hardened criminal that ought to be shackled and dragged in front of a DC federal court, precisely to send a message to the American people that those who have views like Peter Navarro and who serve the, bot, the bad orange man faithfully, they're threats to society, to our democracy, and thus they're gonna be treated as such, as enemies of the regime. But if you are a Michael Sussman, you know, a senior Democrat lawyer in good standing who served in the Justice Department for years under Democrat administration, well, you're gonna be protected. You are, you are, a, you are a made man in the regime and anyone else who is on the other side who dares to threaten their power and privilege, because let's not forget, what was Peter Navarro's seminal contribution in the Trump administration? It was to take on communist China, something, of course, you can't do if you're in the regime. You're going to pay a massive price for it, including facing the long arm of the law.